Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am here to do another winter chicken care video. The last time I made a winter chicken care video was a few years ago and we have learned a couple really key things since then. So I'm gonna go over the most important tips for keeping your chickens comfortable and healthy during the winter. We live in Wisconsin, so if we can keep chickens in the winter, you probably can too. And actually all the techniques we use, we have heard are used by people in Alaska and even much colder climates than ours. Chickens actually can survive without some of these things too. Um, they might get sick, they might not thrive, they might lay fewer eggs, they might live shorter lifespans, but if you want to keep them comfortable, if you don't want to be worrying about them, like I do sometimes when the weather is in the double digits below zero, then these are the things that we do to keep not only them healthy and happy, but also keep our own sanity during this wild time of year. Number one is to make sure that they have the proper nutrition for not only the things they need, but also the things that keep them extra healthy. One thing that I like to do is add in whole corn or cracked corn uh, starting usually a month or so before the weather gets really cold. This helps them put on some more fat, give them some more stored energy. Another thing I make sure to do even more than normal during the winter is to supplement their diet with Grubterra. It's dried soldier fly larva. Grubterra did partner with us on today's video, so thank you so much to them for always helping keep our chickens as healthy as they possibly can be. You guys probably already know by now, we like to free range our chickens as much as possible during the summer. We love for them to get all those bugs, grubs, micronutrients. But during the winter, everything freezes over. There's very little for them to find, if anything, and many of us humans take extra supplements during the winter because we are not getting as much of those micronutrients, as many fresh fruits and vegetables and things. So we do the same thing for our chickens. We sub supplement with black soldier fly larva. Uh, they're dried so they keep a nice long time in dry storage. That way it helps them get all that very important kind of insect nutrition, which is very much a normal part of a healthy chicken's diet uh, without, or even while the ground is frozen. Chickens are omnivores, remember, they are not made to eat only grain. So I do consider this very important. As usual, you guys can use our discount code Okabode for 10% off on those grub terra black soldier fly larva. Number two, one thing we learned since the last time we made a winter chicken care video is that a heated nipple drinker waterer is the way to go. The other heated waterer we used to use, it was kind of funky, you had to like turn it upside down and put the lid on and turn it back over and there's just a lot of water loss that went on. The reason we kept that heater, water heater as long as we did was because we had a cross beak chicken who couldn't really drink out of the nipple drinker system. So since we don't have a cross beak chicken in this flock, we started using the heated nipple drinker. And I think the last time, the coldest it's been is in, I think it was like five or six degrees. And I was really surprised to find that it was still working. The chickens were still drinking from it. I think sometimes they do freeze over or what I've heard is they might freeze over a little bit sooner than kind of pooling drinkers. So still definitely something that's important to check on. Not only is this one easier to fill, like makes less mess, but most importantly, it's not evaporating into the air around the chickens. So the air is not getting more moist from having like pooled water in their living area, which is really important and I'll go into why. Number three is to consider putting a windbreak around the run or at least around the lower portion of the run. You can do this with clear plastic, which helps create kind of a greenhouse effect. When the sun is shining, it can really heat up that inside of the run to give them a little bit of a break from the cold. Another thing people will do if they wanna save money is you can also use used feed bags. So if you're gonna save those feed bags, you can kind of stitch them together and put them around the run and create a really nice windbreak for chickens without even spending anything extra. Again, it kind of depends on the day, but it can just be a break on their little systems, which can definitely help them out. Number four is just keep everything dry. Dry, 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 as dry as humanly possible. Uh, you do not want moisture. Chickens can withstand cold pretty darn well, actually, especially certain breeds. I'll go more into those breeds in a second. But the most important thing is really to make sure that the air is not moist, the air is not damp, their bedding is not damp, which is another reason we love the nipple drinker so much because it doesn't spill when they bump it like the other one did, or at least not nearly as much. This is another reason why some people keep the water outside of the coop because if it does spill at all, it's not gonna be spilling on their bedding. So if you notice too much moisture in their bedding, uh, we really like to keep their bedding very dry. So we use the deep litter method. So whenever it's starting to smell at all or if there's any moisture, we just add more bedding on top. In my opinion, if they're getting in and out and it's not too much for you, 
then uh, no amount is too much until you're ready to clean it out and use it on your garden like we do. Number five is kind of a luxury and I say that because we've been keeping chickens for years and I finally have one for the first time, but it is a covered chicken run. We just put in this covered chicken run and this is so key because it keeps, not only does it keep moisture out from like just regular rain, but snow, it will keep the snow away. So even if we are not here or we're not particularly feeling like shoveling a walkway for the chickens, this covered run is gonna be really nice because it's gonna keep the snow away from them, give them a nice area to walk around that is not only snow free, but that is relatively very dry. We've only had it for a few days. I can already tell it's a game changer. I wish I'd done it so much sooner. Again, we still love to free range our chickens, but having a covered run is so, so nice. It all kind of falls back in line with that theme of just keeping things as dry as possible. Finally, the last point I'm gonna add is just having the right breeds. If you are wanting cold hardy chickens, one of the most important things you can look for is chickens that have shorter combs and or shorter waddles, especially if you're looking at roosters. So like rose combs are pretty much the most ideal comb you can have for cold weather. The whole idea evolutionarily is that increased surface area helps cool the animal down because more blood is hitting the cooler air and it's gonna cool the animal down more. So that said, if you can find chickens with shorter combs, it's gonna help a lot in the winters. Uh, we have kept some roosters with longer combs and we tried Vaseline. Pretty much no matter what we did, they did end up getting a little bit of frostbite on there. So from now on, we're just selecting breeds with shorter combs and that way we don't have to worry about them pretty much at all. Another note actually is on feathered legs. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking that chickens with feathered legs are going to be warmer in the winter because they're gonna have feathers around their legs. And it's actually, my understanding is it's the opposite. So you do not wanna select breeds with feathered legs if you're living in a cold environment in the winter because what happens is even if it's as dry as you can possibly make it, they're walking around and they're gonna get poop. They're gonna step in a puddle of melted snow in between another freeze. Whatever happens, they're gonna get those feathers wet and those feathers are gonna freeze to their skin and it's gonna be less comfortable than if their legs were just cold and dry. If the feathers are damp and they're freezing to their skin or if they're just damp on their skin, it's gonna be a lot worse for the chicken. So, contrary to popular belief, I do not like to select breeds with feathers on their legs for cold hardiness. Uh, they're, it's not quite as simple as just keeping their legs warm. Finally, one last thing I'll say before I run out of battery is that uh, kind of as a bonus point, don't try and keep them locked inside if it's too cold. I have found that chickens are really good at gauging for themselves whether they wanna go outside or not, if it's too cold or if the weather is bad enough or not. I like to always give them the option because it's amazing. Most of the time they will prefer to be outside so many times when I would have locked them inside. Instead, they're choosing to be outside and they just kind of hunker down and it's drier air, it's more airflow. They're getting a little more vitamin D even if it's overcast like it is now. So as long as you're providing them with access to go in and out and you know, ideally some place that's covered, whether it's the bottom of your coop, we used to have a raised coop and they would hang out underneath, or if it's a covered run, I really like to recommend giving your chickens the option to go outside instead of trying to micromanage and lock them inside if it's too cold. I know it can be really intimidating to think about keeping chickens in very cold weather, especially if you're new to it, like I once was, but for the most part, just making sure your chickens have the appropriate nutrition is really important, the appropriate body fat before the winter even hits. Um, and then also the appropriate setup so that they can use what they need to use. They're pretty darn good at self-regulating and don't feel like you have to worry too much. Thank you again to Grubterra for partnering with us on today's video. Don't forget to use our discount code if you want a little discount on that. And please leave a comment with your recommendations for cold weather chicken care, especially if you are somebody who is really nervous going into it and now that you have a season or two under your belt, that you can reassure some other people that they are pretty darn good at staying warm. Thanks for watching today and we'll see you next time.